Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp YouTube channel. In this video, I want to cover that if you wanted to create a debound function in Swift UI without using combine, how can you do that? And for those of you who don't know what de debounce does, as you can see from their documentation, uh, debounce publishes elements only after a specific time interval lapses between events. So basically the whole idea is that if you're typing really quickly on a text box, inside the text box, and every time you type something that has to go and make a network request and fetch something, then it will be a good idea to wait a little bit so that the user can finish typing. So that is what debounce function allows you to do in Combine. And here's one of the articles that also mentions some of the use cases. Right there you can see that common use cases include search bars, text input, auto suggestions, where you want to wait for the user to pause typing before initiating a search. All right. So that's what we're going to be building in Swift UI. Now keep in mind that I'm going to show you some basic code for how you can perform the bounce function using Swift UI code. But if you want to watch the complete video, which goes into way more detail and also shows you how to implement a reusable view modifier, then you have to go to azamsharp.school, click on azamsharp pro member content only. So you have, have to be a pro member to see this. And then here is the video. And you can see this is a 22 minute video of building a debounce view modifier in Swift UI without combine and using the view modifier. All right, so this video is actually going to show you that how you can create a view modifier and you can uh, you can use it. All right, okay. So for the current video, we're going to do some basic stuff and we will implement the debounce functionality, but without the view modifier. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need is some way to write text. So I'm going to go ahead and add a state variable. And I'll call it search. Over here, I can go ahead and create a form. But the UI is completely up to you, whatever you want to do. And then I can simply go ahead and put the search over here as a text field. And you can see on the preview on the right side that it is appearing with the search. Now what I want to do is every time I type something in the search, I want to, you know, perform a network call basically. Okay, so one of the ways that we can do that is using the task view modifier. And some people don't really know, but task view modifier also contains the ID parameter. This means that whenever this ID is going to change, whenever whatever you're passing over here, this one, search is going to change, then the task is going to get executed again. Now, keep in mind that the first time when you actually launch the app, the task is actually invoke, whether the search is changing or not. So if I go over here, I simply say it's task. You can see that the task is actually getting called and every single time I go to the search and now type something over here, let's say H O U Houston, you can see that the task view modifier is actually getting invoked. All right. So because it has a dependency on search and the search is tied up to the text box and binding and it is keep on changing. All right. Okay. So what we want to do since task is also a good place to do async operation. What we want to do over here is to make a call. Now, if I simply go ahead and make a call over here, let's say perform network call. Now, we're not going to actually perform the network call, but you know, we're just going to fake it. So let's go ahead and create this function, perform network call. <coughs> and the function is simply you know, performing the network call, it's not really performing a network call, it's just sleeping for a couple of, you know, maybe like two seconds or so. Uh, I can go ahead and print something over here. Let's say perform 
network call so that we know that this function is getting called perform network call. All right, so you can see already see that the function, if I go ahead and run it, function is already called. I mean, I didn't even type anything, so that's kind of weird. And if I start typing some stuff in the text box, let's say if I type in D, E N V E R Denver, you can actually see that, oh, it's actually making a network call for every single time, for every single character that we are inputting, right? Uh, we don't really want to do that because if you do that, your network will be bogged down with so many different requests. Um, we want to wait for the user. Maybe I'm typing the name of the movie, Lord of the Rings. Right now, this is a long name. And look at all the network calls that had to happen for Lord of the Rings. If I were just searching for Lord of the Rings, so this is not good. So we want to wait for the users a couple of seconds, maybe, you know, one second, two seconds, so that we know that they are finished typing. All right. We also need to make sure that we don't call this if it is empty. So I can say search is empty. So if it's not empty, then we can perform the network call. So this is at least going to make sure that uh, the initial call is not really made. The other thing that you can also do if you want, you can also say over here that if the search.count search dot count is greater than certain number like minimum length so that is also up to you if you want to do that um, you can see over here i'm using is not empty and then the search so we can actually remove this part uh, but if you remove this part keep in mind that it's not really going to protect you against if a person is just sp pressing space or we have not trimmed the characters or tab and all those things all right so, so we will have to implement something else over here for like a character or white space but i'm just going to keep it simple and i'm just going to say well if it's not empty then yeah go ahead and perform the network call but that doesn't really solve our problem right i mean i can go ahead and say lord of and you can already see so many network calls in the output window right there so what we want to do is we want to basically sleep for a couple of maybe seconds. Just give user the opportunity to finish their thought, to finish writing their name, whatever they're doing. And we can do task.sleep for, let's say, two seconds. All right. There we go. So this is going to um, sleep that particular task for two seconds. After that, we can actually check that if this task is not canceled, then you will move forward. If it is canceled, then just return it and don't do anything. All right, so it's three lines of code over here that we have now. All right, okay, let's go ahead and check what happens. Now, if I go over here and I'm gonna type, look at what happens. Lord, see there, it's not, it's not really firing anything right now. And I'm done. And there we go. You can see that it waited for two seconds. And then after it waited for two seconds, then it actually made the call. All right. So this is how you can implement a very basic debounce operation. Uh, now keep in mind that this is very hard to reuse. It also doesn't really provide you any UI that is performing anything. Um, and that is all covered in my video over here. This is obviously a 22, 23 minute video. So this goes into way more detail and you can also download the code for that. Uh, so make sure that if you are interested, then, you know, simply go to adamsharp.school, go to courses and Adam Sharp Pro member only content. Now, the great thing about becoming a pro member is that you get access to obviously these videos, but you get access to all of these courses, which keeps on going on forever. And you also get, depending on your membership status, if you're a monthly member, 
then you get half of these workshops too. And if you are an annual member, then you get full off all of these workshops, which is kind of crazy because these workshops alone are like thousands of dollars. So uh, annual member will get like free workshops. And you can become a member if you go to adamsharp.school, just click on become a pro, and here are different plans that you can enroll. Uh, keep in mind that the individual videos, like for the exclusive pro content, it's right here in Adam Sharp Pro member content. And this is the video that you're probably interested in. But there are some other videos also, like if you wanted to build a, you know, reusable Swift networking JSON client, or if you wanted to show Toast messages. So a lot of videos are added regularly to Adam Sharp exclusive pro member content apart from the courses. So definitely try it out. This is more of a simple code. Uh, it will be hard to reuse, but in the actual video, which is this one, I'll show you how you can actually expose it and move it into a view modifier so that you can easily use it. As you can see in the image, it's gonna be, the end result will be like that with a debounce operator. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much once again and enjoy this video. And also please make sure to like, subscribe, and also share. Thank you so much.